All right, let's discuss projects. Okay, so you have your weekly modules that contain your quizzes and your pick a task. Projects were kind of hard for me to place in the classroom because you turn in a project every other week. And so it doesn't really fit in the modules. And oh, I just found a typo on my, sil on my syllabus. This should say five projects right there. Um, you're gonna do five projects, not four. So please correct your syllabus when you see that. Um, so it's kind of hard to, for me to place it in the in the module. So what I've what I'm going to ask you to rely on is the assignment list on the home page. Uh, you can actually see this same list either by clicking on the home page, clicking on the syllabus button, or by clicking on the assignments button. <laughs> so a lot of redundancy built into the Canvas platform. Okay, so if you click on project one you'll see an assignment Dropbox set up just like you saw for the case studies. Um, the difference is instead of a list of, of assignments all right here in the box, I made it as a PDF file. So I've already launched that PDF file so we can look at it. So your projects are due in the odd numbered weeks. Sometimes students get a little confused by what I mean by week one and stuff. Um, so let's take a quick look at your course calendar here on your syllabus because what I did was I divided the the quarter into 10 weeks and numbered them right now we're in zero week um, and then we'll have weeks one two three and so on you know week one three five those are the odd weeks here are the num the um, dates that are associated with those odd weeks and you'll notice that's when the projects are due so over here you'll see the projects are in alternate weeks um, so that helps to guide you as well as the due dates being on the assignment list here in the classroom. Okay, so here's the premise with projects. This is an opportunity for you to do a little bit more research or do a little bit of hands-on data collection um, given, you know, based on your interest level and whether you have access to a baby or if you have access to an older person, things like that. Or if you have time or whatever. So to show you the topics, I numbered them and wrote the title in italics to try and attract your attention to the differences between the topics and then the things you have to answer and submit to me are in red italics. So here's you, it's a long list and you can pick one from this list. So we have topic number one where you're going to um, do the scientific reasoning exercise based on a breastfeeding study and um, what you're going to want to submit to me would be, after having read everything, your answers to this these five questions. Um, item number two, choice number two, preschool education, what would Vygotsky say? And again, there are these red italicized questions that you would answer. Number three, major developmental theories, discover your bias. So in number three, you take a little quiz to discover your attitudes about different devel developmental questions. Da, 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 and that's you're taking a little quiz and then these red italicized questions are what you would answer for me um, number four active search for knowledge and so we again have red italicized questions to answer so you'd want to answer all the questions answer them fully for whichever one you choose so there's four choices on this list some of our, our lists are significantly longer than that um, I try and give you lots of options, lots of different kinds of assignments that you can pick from so you can find something that fits your time demands, your interest levels, you know, the things you want to do. I know a lot of you are nursing students because this is a prerequisite for nursing school. And so I tried to include like some medical questions, you know, things like, like um, childhood infections is one of the choices, things like that. So I try to make sure that um, there were topics and activities that anybody you know, who's enrolled in the class should be able to find something that you're interested in and willing to do a report on. The key things for the grading of the projects, back to projects here, are um, the accuracy. Every project has some factual content that you know is inherently part of the answer. So make sure you're being accurate you're being complete. This is the area where when people lose points, this is where they lose points. They um, don't answer all those red italicized questions or they don't answer them fully. Um, I have put a word length on projects now because I s sometimes get students who will give me very brief like three word answers and don't explain why they've given that answer or given any insight. 
Um, so now I've got a word length of 150 words on as a minimum for these um, projects. And then timeliness, you won't get any credit if you're late. You need to get those projects submitted prior to, to their deadline. I, um, I even I said you should shoot for 1158 because again, like I mentioned, Canvas time might be different from your time. So be ready to hit push no later than 1158 because it's due by 1159 on Tuesdays. So like week one, you're gonna have pick a task due on Sunday, project one due on Tuesday, quiz one due on Wednesday. Week two, you'll just have pick a task on Sunday and quiz two due on Wednesday. Week three, pick a task Sunday, project Tuesday, quiz Wednesday. So you start getting into a little sequence of things being due. You're welcome to work ahead, like I've said before, if you wanna turn in projects early, I have absolutely no objection to that. You just can't turn them in late. Um, do not write your projects as though you're texting your friend or something like that. Um, I need to be able to easily read your, your submission. I mean, it needs to be um, you know, written in a way that I can understand what you're trying to say. If there's gigantic spelling errors and grammatical errors that interfere with my ability to understand, um, I, I reserve the right to deduct points for that. Um, if some of the projects ask you to complete some kind of scale, some kind of, like the, the one I showed you where you figure out your own biases. Um, I don't want to see your answers to those kinds of scales. I just want your answers to my questions about those things. So that's the idea with that. Now for submitting your projects, like I showed you with the case studies, um, you can attach it, and I think I'm gonna, did I already show you here? Um, you can attach as a file upload, and again, same file limitations that I mentioned on the case studies. You've got um, .doc, .docx, um, .rtf, or .txt are, are your file options. So if you can save in one of those file options, then you can do a file upload. If you can't save in one of those file options, then you'll, you'll wanna follow these directions and do a copy and paste into the text box. So you'll click on text entry and then do your copy and paste here. So you have um, the file upload choice. Please don't put anything in the comments box. Do click the assignment is my own original work and then click submit. Here's the rubric that'll be used for grading your, uh, your project so that you know what the criteria are. You'll notice timeliness isn't on the list because you can't even get it in late, so it's all a, that's a moot point. Okay, so um, projects, you can submit them early, but I will not read them and process them until the day after they were due. So they're due Tuesday at 11.59 on Wednesday, I'll grade them and um, send you feedback that will arrive in your inbox. And then you also will be able to reflect on that um, feedback by clicking on the grades button on the left navigation panel. So you can always um, see your actual points and the comments that I made by clicking on the, grade, the grades button. Okay, so that's enough on that. The next lecture will be on exams.